Over this fall, I've done some serious nesting around the house. There was a paper patio that was sloping towards the house in the back, and it has seen better days. I tore it out, and my cousin helped me pour a new patio in the back. Angela and I have always wanted an outdoor space for sitting, cooking, and eating, but on the southern side of the house, the summer sun can be a bit intense. To tame the sun just a bit and start the much bigger project that will be this outdoor living space, I chose to start with a pergola. This isn't my first pergola build. I recently built an arbor, which is kind of like a pergola for my brother-in-law and sister-in-law to get married under. I'll link to that video here. This one, however, is going to be thousands of pounds and require some legitimate engineering. So I started looking around for some plans to work from online. Little did I know that Simpson Strong Tide not only has an amazing deck builder planner, but recently added a pergola planner to their website. After finding the tool online, I got in contact with Simpson Strong Tide to answer a few questions, and they ended up helping out a bit with this build. So I wanted to take a minute to thank them for sponsoring this project. The planner is super easy to use. You choose the type of pergola you want to build, whether it has a full roof, a very regal three-tier pergola, or the more traditional two-tier pergola like the one I built. You can then pick your width, length, and height for the space you're trying to build in. The planner can build standalone or attached pergolas and allows you to configure the size of your posts, your beams, and your lattice, as well as the cantilever of each tier. Through all this, it gives you immediate visual feedback as you build so you know exactly what the finished product is going to look like. Once you've selected your rough dimensions, you can add your flourishes like wood stain colors, decorative rafter tails. You can also build up the space around your pergola by picking your patio type, adding a grill and some furniture, and picking a setting for the pergola. It really makes it feel like it's in a space. And once it's all filled out, you can immediately export your materials, parts, and cut lists, as well as a full report that you can take to your local strong tie dealer to procure all the necessary components. My first step was getting about 2,000 pounds of lumber delivered. The plans called for pressure treated pine, but I've always really liked the look of rough cedar for outdoor spaces. I've started working with a local lumber yard called Buyer Lumber here in St. Louis and been buying a ton of construction lumber and cedar for them for a long time. It's where I got the rough cedar for the raised planters from earlier this year. But more on that partnership soon. After the lumber was delivered, I was able to follow the cut list provided in the plans to break down these huge beams into their finished lengths. The perfectionists in me kept second guessing the plans and mocking up and measuring, but the provided cut list is accurate down to a 16th of an inch. I cut the six by six posts in multiple passes, making sure to line up the saw to a speed square and the previous cut to get nice square cuts on all the ends. The six by sixes were so thick though, I still needed to come back with the reciprocating saw to finish each cut. Breaking down the material only takes a couple of hours, but I built this pergola alone and a four by 10 by 14 footer weighs a ton. So I took a break after I got my cut list completed to let my back recover. One thing it does not call out in the plans very clearly or in the report is how to attach the four by 12 beams to the six by six posts. But through careful looking at the diagram, I realized that there's a lap joint on the 6x6 posts that you seat the 4x12s onto. These are pretty easy to cut as long as they're not already attached with a circular saw and a hammer and chisel, but make sure you do them before you install them or you'll regret it like I did. I then used my SDS drill to pre-drill into the slab to install the 5 8 masonry bolts that are going to secure the plate that the 6x6 posts are going to mount to. Ensure the posts are plumb in both directions as you go through the step as well, and luckily I didn't have to, but if you can't get the post to sit perfectly plumb, consider using composite shims underneath before driving the screws into the attachments so they're supported both mechanically and physically once installed. This will make the pergola a lot stronger over time. After the beams were set, it was time for the fun stuff. I recently bought a porta band with a five inch cut capacity and even this beast had a little trouble cutting through the decorative rafter tails. Once you get a porta band, you'll never look at a jigsaw the same way again. I did however try to cut these decorative tails with a jab cut jigsaw blade with reasonable success. Either way, to get a good finish on these, you're gonna need to follow up with a belt sander anyway. So use what you have. With everything now cut to length and all the decorative tails cut, it was time to assemble this thing, still on my own. Ouch. First I installed the 4x12 beams using the requisite hardware from StrongTie. These were actually easier than I thought. I did though make sure to recheck everything for plumb before driving in the screws. With a structure this big, every little bit of error is going to add up. 
With the 4x12 beams installed, I moved on to the 4x10 rafters. These were a bear. They were easily 200 pounds of beam, 10 feet up in the air, <laughs> perfectly centered on these two 2x12s. I managed to do it by myself by leaning one end of the beam up and then walking the other end up on my ladder. Fortunately, I have a fat kid ladder to support 375 pounds. I pre-marked each rafter while they were on the ground with the proper cantilever length as well as the center points for them on each of the beams before I started walking off the ladder. This way I didn't have to do so much maneuvering once I was up in the air. With the three rafters installed, all that was left was the lattice. With everything looking so beefy already and the inconsistency of 2x2 stock, I went with full 2x4s for the lattice. I started from the center and worked my way out using spacer blocks for consistency. The process went super smooth, but I really wish I would have used a compact impact driver for this job because my shoulders were toast after installing 25 lattice pieces. 25 lattice pieces with six straps per lattice times two screws per strap. I drove 300 screws over my head using a drill that probably weighed five pounds. The fastening system from StrongTie is awesome. Rather than driving bolts and stripping the paint off of the bolts and having to touch up everything, they use structural screws with washers that just look like bolt heads. This gives the whole thing a very industrial look without all the pre-drilling and worrying about splitting of massive structural bolts. The metal strapping is very good quality and it looks fantastic once it's all finished and installed. Very, uh, what do they call it, farmhouse industrial. I really love having this space on my back patio now. It's so beautiful and meshes so well with the nature around it. I've already smoked a brisket out here and had a few beers under the pergola. I can't wait until next summer when we can hopefully get past this pandemic and I can have my first patio party out there. Thanks for watching and if you enjoyed this video, please consider subscribing and turning on channel notifications because I plan on releasing a lot of other cool builds this year. If you plan on building a patio or pergola, please consider supporting my partner on this build, Simpson Strong Tie. I've linked to the pergola tool as well as the deck tool for you to play around with as you plan your next outdoor build. Thanks for watching. Again, I can't wait for summer and thank God it's 2021. And remember to keep your tools sharp and keep your mind sharper.